Hello, I'm Tonya Todman, Australia's Queen of Craft. I've recycled some lampshades. They started off looking a bit like this sad, tired one that I got from op shops. They go a bit yellow. They're made from a polyester lining and just a fabric surface, but they lend themselves perfectly for a new dress on the outside. You don't need to do much about the lining. You'll use a bit of glue and, of course, the trusty brother to create the gathering that's going to give you this effect around here. This is the top of the range as far as their computerised range is concerned. It's the FS101. It is very, very quiet. I like that because machines perhaps sound a bit like a tractor. When you talk about fabric being on the bias, it means it's cut across the grain. Now, normally the grain of a piece of fabric goes like this. There's the warp and the weft. They go upwards and across. But when you're cutting it on the bias, you cut across that. And that means that it's very stretchy. And that's what you need when you're winding this around a shape like this. It means that it blends in, stretches and adapts very easily. So you need fabric that's wide enough that you can cut it on the bias. Now, when you're gathering, and you, when you finish stitching and you're ready to pull it up, you are better off gathering the bobbin thread. You know the bobbin is the reel of thread underneath, down the bottom of the machine. See, the bobbin thread remains loose. If you were to pull the top thread, it would jam it up and it would not flow very easily. So always pull your bobbin thread when you're gathering anything. We leave the raw edge of the bias on the top here because it won't fray anymore. It will just remain slightly feathery. And with some glue and some pins, you'll even that around the top of the lampshade, like so. And then down the bottom, you will just ease that in underneath there like that and some PVA glue. If you're going to use PVA glue, and I suggest you do, uh, you might want to thin it down with a little bit of water. It's quite thick, and if your fabric's very lightweight, it might be a little heavy. Don't use a hot melt glue gun anywhere that you're going to see the glue because hot melt glue tends to dry in lumps, and you don't want lumps on your lampshade. There we go, that fits there, that will tuck under there. You will make some binding. I'll show you an easy way with some binding. It's cut on the bias again. This is a double layer of bias binding here that I've made. If you want to make it accurate to bind the edge, fold one side into the crease mark at the middle and the other side in to the crease mark in the middle and then just fold it in half again and that gives you a perfectly even width of bias and you know that there's going to be accurate stitching from the top to the bottom or if you're going to bind an edge you can just place that over there and you'll get a perfectly straight piece of binding. Now you don't have to have gathered, you can have some pleats. This is what's known as a drum lampshade. Well, I'll take it off and show you. See how that's the double binding I was talking about? The edges are folded into the middle, like so, and then it's folded in half again, and that's on the bias. And I know it's the right length to go around the lampshade and fit accurately. I'll arrange that neatly later. I'll show you how to do the pleats now. On an ironing board, so that you can iron them in, like so and you just keep going. Now if the lampshade slopes out slightly to the bottom, you need to allow for that by the bottom pleat being slightly wider than the top. And then once that's in place, on it goes around the lampshade there, holding the bottom pleats in place because they'll all be ironed into place. And then you pin that into place and then you can hand sew over the top if you like. You use a little bit of glue, which might be a big help to you, and then you make your bindings for the top and the bottom, and your lampshade's finished. Very, very easy. Uh, it's expensive at decorator shops to have a lampshade made, and you really don't need to pay all that money. 
Now it's easy enough to paint ceramic that has not been glazed, but if you happen to be wanting to recycle a lampshade and a space which is already glazed, that is it's shiny, it's not suitable to use a brush on ceramic that's shiny. It will leave brush strokes. The best way to do that, to apply paint, is to use a sponge. Rinse it out first, get it soft, and then start applying the paint in, dab in dabbing motion. I'll show you how to do that. But first, get the colour right out of acrylic paints. Just apply it to the sponge like that, and then start dabbing on. You can see the streaks on this already uh, from the first coat which was applied with a brush. Now I'll continue to go all over that until it's completely covered to the extent that I want. And then if I want to, I can apply a coat of clear Liquitex gloss. Switch it on and be ready for some compliments. So whether you're creating, decorating or celebrating, it's what you make it at Spotlight. Thank you.